When I made my first impressions video about Monarch, my feelings about it were very positive, so much so that I called it maddeningly good in the title and kept it in my mind as I jumped into other games until I eventually came back to it late last month. The words maddeningly good quickly became two prominent words in the rest of my time with it, not so much as a joint phrase but more as individual words this time. On one hand, there are many concepts I love in Monarch, from its deep lore within its menus and world, its slowly unfolding mystery, and challenges that felt satisfying to solve 50% of the time that make for a world that really did have a lot of potential to be great. But the way it maddeningly makes you grind your way to its goals act by act make it hard to keep the momentum that in the end made me put it down sooner than I might have liked. It's a game with a lot of good behind it from its concepts, the team that worked on it, and many other things in between, but in the end my 70 hours with it were full of excited highs and frustratingly long grinds that meant my own personal madness gauge was tipped over more than I would have liked in a game that had so much potential to be a really great experience. The thing that kept me tied to Monarch mentally was its story of Monarch's Pact Bearers, its academy, and its inhabitants that created a world that was interesting to explore, especially if you don't mind a puzzle here and there. I covered the premise in my first impressions already, but the basic points to know is that Monarch is set in Shin Mikado Academy that is currently trapped inside a big barrier caused by distortions. As you explore, not only do you learn more about the distortions, you also learn more about the school, its history, and its students that make the fascinating world of Monarch feel like it's constantly growing deeper as you team up with its groups of characters to try and fix these distortions and solve the mysteries surrounding them. This is done by exploring the maddening mist caused by pact bearers using their powers and spread around the upper floors of different parts of the school, all tied to a different pact bearer based on one of the seven deadly sins. Before you face them though, you'll have to work your way around the students on these floors that have gone mad or are going crazy, and there's always a tricky puzzle or riddle to conquer too that might play with some people's own personal madness gauge as well. For me though, these were parts I enjoyed in Monarch as they reminded me more of solving mysteries in something like Danganronpa. Finding passwords from referencing student IDs or things that happened in the academy only made me pay more attention to the articles and things I was picking up to read about the world more, and while these puzzles weren't always straightforward and admittedly some outsmarted me and I resorted to Google a few times, the excited moment after I got them was something I found satisfying that made me happy to spend time talking to all the people within the academy and seeing the dialogue change in and out of the mist or at different points of the game all helped to build a really interesting world that I enjoyed watching grow deeper. This was all helped by characters that weren't all ones I fell in love with, but I did grow to like them all on some level and how they formed a group of unlikely partners at different points of the story. Not to spoil anything, but I did come to care enough about certain characters in it that I cared if they lived or died or at least could appreciate the role they played in the story, and it does a good job of making each main character feel significant in some way, even if they're not a character you end up partnering with in later parts. This is another one of the parts of Monarch that kept me coming back to it and motivated me for a big chunk of it to keep going to try and see it through to its truest ending. But even my love of certain characters like the safe and secure Kokoro couldn't totally keep me from feeling what I consider to be the downsides of Monarch's gameplay, which is a shame as the rich and deep world of Monarch and all its lore I really do think had the potential to be something special if the rest of it didn't feel like such a grind. When I first started Monarch, I was pleasantly surprised to try its seemingly unique tactical system. Its madness gauge that you can raise in both its dungeons and its fields by using authority skills initially made for a great feeling of balance between using the best moves and keeping your character sane, and I was able to keep this feeling at least until its second arc as I enjoyed trying to use its enlightened mechanic where you combine the madness and awakened states. In fact, I almost even made a video on the mechanic because I was so excited when I finally saw it, but nonetheless, I was really enjoying the party manipulation it took to get this strategy to work in most of the first act. This strategy worked for me, Monarch, until I got to its next difficulty spike a little before Act 2, where I found out that I was actually greatly underleveled for the next battles, almost like they'd forgotten the first act had me slightly level up four different characters that I was only using one of now. And even when looting the XP currency in this game's spirit from the others the one time I still could, it still was enough to take on the further difficulty spikes that saw me grinding a lot more than intended, and I 
I'd guess that at least half to a third of my 70 hour playthrough ended up being spent on this repetitive task. I also initially praised Monarch in my first impressions for keeping things fresh with the phone numbers that you can find that lead to extra stages for you to grind in, but I actually found these stages not to be as good as grinding on the precipice ones that you unlock on each floor as they have much more spirit. These stages serve me well as they seem to follow either mine or the game's difficulty spike by level, but I also never replaying a lot of the same stages, hearing some of the music I didn't like so much from it that paled in comparison to its vocal boss tracks that are actually quite good, and all of this created for an experience that became quite grindy, and one that I understand why others have called a slog, as it really is if you commit to playing it for more than one ending. It's a big shame, as Monarch does have some interesting mechanics to play with. As I said, the beginning of my playthrough was so interesting because of going mad, combining states, and getting new units to play with, but this stopped being fun eventually, as every time this happened, the unit I'd received would be level 1, and when you're versing level 50 enemies at this point in the game, it's almost like being given a bunch of homework or something, especially since the plot itself is interesting enough, but all the grinding parts make it stop and start way more than it should. In this game with multiple endings that it needs to entice its players with to convince them to keep going for the true end, the constant difficulty spikes every new battle, and what just became battles of relying on assist attacks felt very different to the experience that made me fall in love with it at the start, which is a shame as this and its endings just ended up feeling like a lot of padding in an otherwise interesting experience. A part that unfortunately added the most feeling of repetitive grinding and frustration was Monarch's second act that pairs you off with the character of your choice to experience their route and an ending of sorts. But the design of these segments left me feeling unsatisfied with the gameplay and endings I was receiving, maybe by design to make me go and get the true one. But ultimately, the grinding became too much and I stopped two endings in as I was finding nothing overly different or exciting anymore in spite of liking its core plot. I decided I ultimately couldn't put myself through another 5-10 to 10 hour long grind fest just to see two more endings before getting to the satisfying one that I wanted, so I put it down and frankly, since playing games with more variety, I really haven't regretted the decision. This is even after I went through something similar in another game by the same director, Crystar, a game I actually love, where you also need to have a few endings before getting to the best one. But the difference between Crystar and Monarch is the active nature of Crystar saves it from feeling too monotonous, whereas using my eventual strategy of crowding my units together to do assist attacks in long tactical battles every time in Monarch didn't quite have the same excitement. Even though I loved certain characters in Monarch and seeing how the protagonists impacted each one's lives individually, when the gameplay isn't fun in a day and age where frankly there are other ways to enjoy a game's story through video mediums or using the casual difficulty, it just made me realize I wasn't having fun in this world anymore, which is a shame as I truly think it could have been good. I loved its intricate little mysteries hidden in plain sight, finding out about students as I was able to find their alter egos, the personality quizzes, and the random self-reflection breaks in the world, along with the small talk between the party members in their small time together, and noticing little details in between, like how the seven wonders sometimes do lead to unlocking things in the school, or how the characters all correspond with chess pieces. But the difficulty, balance, game style, and multiple ending concept for this game I think don't work perfectly together in this tactical experience, at least in a way that makes for one that isn't frustrating. And I even have had a crash during one boss battle that doesn't help me want to give the game a huge recommendation, although I still can't help but think its concepts are extremely interesting and I've been listening to the soundtrack for a week and loving it that has me feeling a true love-hate relationship for this game. If you don't mind sinking a lot of time into a game for slow reward or you're looking for a world with a lot of lore within one school to dive into, Monarch could be a game you could get a lot out of, especially since my experience with just two routes completed took my playtime up to 70 hours. But bear in mind, there are games like the Trail series, Caligula, and Persona that do this with more respect to the player's time, but I think if you know that Monarch's a Florida experience going in, this could help somewhat with the expectations versus reality feeling I had. I really loved its promo materials, its opening trailer, and aesthetic, and the team working behind it made it all seem very promising. And while it doesn't fall completely flat, it won't be a game I'll be picking up for a while, as the grinding and similar battles made it a more imperfect experience for me by the end of it. 
My monarch experience started off good, but felt a little like a descent into madness towards the end. Great concepts introduced well at the beginning ended up falling flat to high-level spikes and damage sponge enemies towards the end, leaving me as someone who wanted to love it so much, feeling like I couldn't spend another minute with it. It's actually a story I feel almost would have worked better as an anime in some ways. The grinding would be completely taken out, it would have a better overall visual presentation, and some of its twisted ideas could be fully realized in a satisfying way without putting the player through too much, although it would mean missing out on some of the things that do make it good, like the lore you pick up on the way that did show this game's potential of creating a deep and interesting world. But at the end of the day, Monarch is a game and gameplay needs to keep fun from start to finish, and while I still love the many parts of it that I mentioned, it's not one I can easily recommend to everyone, as there's a chance its end chapter's grindfest might drive you mad too. Thank you for watching this video, let me know in the comments below if you played Monarch and if you have, what did you think of it? You can like and share this video if you enjoyed it, subscribe to my channel for more JRPG content like this, and ring that bell to get notifications on whenever I post so you don't miss a thing. You can check out more videos here and you can find me on social media, on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram, all at JRPG Jungle. Links to those will be in the description below. Thank you to NIS for the code, and until next time, thank you, bye!